Exactly. Well, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I really am happy to be here. Yeah, me too. So let's begin our journey into your life and your 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 books and everything that you're doing by asking you this. I know we're going into COVID fatigue. I think we're all a little tired of talking about it, but it was such a big deal for us. How did you make it through that time period and how did it change the way that you live your life now? Well, we happened to be in Miami uh, when everything sort of, came to a close and everything shut down. My husband and I were very fortunate because we were able to keep our jobs or a semblance of our jobs and work remotely in our house. Um, and, you know, I mean, the biggest impact of COVID was really, really, number one, you find out uh, how compatible you are with your significant other. Yeah. And we just had, we were so compatible. We actually felt very close and, and felt a sort of serenity um, during that time. Um, but really kind of the biggest impact was being able to publish my books. I, I published them during the pandemic. Um, I had a big plan for my first three books uh, in the series. I wanted to find a literary agent and I with the uncertainty of every industry, including publishing, I just didn't want them to sit in my computer and collect cyber dust. Yeah. I was really, really focused on, you know what, I'm going to put these books out into the world. And I think the first one was published in the summer of 2020, uh, Camera Ready. And then the second and third ones came out um, consecutively uh, in the next year. So that that was kind of like the biggest part of of what I did during COVID and and what I discovered. Um, I'm I'm a, just on a personal note. I'm I'm really into cooking, and I think I cooked every every fattening meal that I <laughs> would never allow myself <laughs> during COVID. And we just we just had a ball with that. But you know, I know it was just an incredibly um, like you said, an impactful time for everybody, just health wise and everything else. But we, we were extremely fortunate. Yeah. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do right now. And even before the books, if I put you in front of a third grade class and it's career day, and one of the kids is curious and says, Hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? I would tell them that I write novels and that I, um, started writing when I was about their age. <laughs> um, and I would probably encourage reading and writing to those students. Um, I actually have a day job too. Um, I'm a, a marketer by trade. Um, but what I found, and I do work with students who are more in the college level, um, uh, business students, English students. And what's so funny is they're, you, they're so interested in the writing they they don't care about my day job they don't care that i had a whole career <laughs> before i started writing these novels they're like I, how, tell me about the books tell me about how you come up with stories so that's always kind of fun for me to, to tell them you know and and always encourage people who want to write so when you were in the third grade was it always your dream to be a writer you know joe it wasn't it, i wouldn't say it was a dream it's just that i was interested in that. I was always kind of a dreamer, like a daydreaming kid who wasn't real good in math or, you know, stereotypically not good in math or science, right. but I was always good in my English classes. And my teachers would give, you know, us writing assignments where we could just creative write. And I just would come up with stories. And I think the funniest memory I have when I was in third grade is that I I had this story about these rabbits and, and I, I, could, I wouldn't end it. And it, I had this thick booklet that was filled with all these pages with this story. And finally, the, the teacher says to me, you need to end <laughs> beginning, middle, end. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So I would say I wrote throughout my life. I was always really good in writing and communicating. That was part of my job for years was writing press releases. And I just found that I was very versatile at writing, but I, the creative writing really started um, probably like 15 years ago where I started writing, you know, 
I wouldn't call it a manuscript because it wasn't that, but I was writing creatively and found that I really, really loved it and um, had a passion for that. And so, uh, you know, while writing has always been a part of my life, I would say the creative element of writing really kind of kicked in about 10 to 15 years ago. What was the first book that you read that really either made you want to write or made you love reading? It was actually uh, Jane Eyre. <laughs> Jane Eyre, um, Charlotte Bronte, yeah. and I, um, I read that first. I was, I was, I think I was, I remember I was 11 years old. My mom, I was very sick and my mom gave me three classics to read. Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, and then Les Miserables. And I, 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 I read them with such um, gusto. I mean, I was, I, I cried. I was like, how can uh, like pages make you feel like this. And I was so in awe of how that, that happens. And so I think those three books, I still reread them because they are classic. I mean, the stories are just incredibly um, well done and intricate and the language. I mean, I, I truly believe that reading helps you be a better writer in every sense. Yeah, for sure. So who's been a hero for you? Who's been that inspiration in your life? My biggest hero is my husband. <laughs> He's not standing here, so he doesn't know. But he he really he really has championed me in in this endeavor. You know, it's it's you have to you have to have uh, someone in your life who who encourages you to keep going because you know writing is a solitary effort and it can be you know, you can look at it one day and say, wow, I think this is really great. And then the next day you're looking at your pages and saying, oh my gosh, I'm just going to scrap this book and start over or maybe not do it anymore. So it really helps to have somebody behind me that's always saying, no, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> so. So if you could meet one author alive on the planet right now that you love, that you could spend some time with, ask some questions, who would that be? Without a doubt, Ruth Ware. Okay, okay. She is she is undoubtedly my favorite author, um, and I've read almost all of her books. I have one, her new book to read, but I I just find her writing so incredibly fascinating, and her her you know she's she's really kind of the Agatha Christie of our generation, but yep. she really actually got me interested in moving. And I know we aren't talking about my books yet specifically, but moving into that thriller and mystery category. So talk to me a little bit about your books and how you arrived at this genre and the way that you construct these stories. How did that happen? Well, the first three books are part of the series Truth, Lies, and Love and Advertising. And that will give you a really good idea of what genre those are in. <laughs> they are romantic dramedies is how I refer to them. They um, take place in L.A., which I had mentioned I grew up there. And I find that I'm always writing about a city that I've left behind. <laughs> it's like I have to go two cities forward. So maybe right, Summer's Blood was set in Las Vegas my first three books were in LA and then, you know, maybe eventually I'll write something that's based in Miami. Cause that's, that was the last place we lived. But so the, the first three books, the, the conflict was about these two main characters who really had a, you know, a love hate relationship. It kind of starts out. And, and, and one of the things that I did was write what I know, right? I, I, I worked in marketing and advertising my whole career. I worked as a client. I was on the client side when I was in Las Vegas managing agencies. And then I flipped over to the other side. And then suddenly I was the ad agency person with clients. And so I know the business so well, it was very fun to use advertising in that world, set it in LA where I love to be and, and um, where I'd lived. And then just really unfold the story of these characters. Um, there, There's a he heavy work influence in there, which I like, and I feel like I've captured the essence of the the that job and had some real fun with it. These books are fun. All of them are fun. That's that's the one thing that I'd say the thread that that connects them. Um, so, but the first series was a, a very definitively more targeted, I'd say, toward women and more about uh, you know the romantic experience. And 
when I finished with those three, I was actually finishing four position only because I released four position only is technically the prequel to summer's blood, right? My thriller. Um, but I released them in a weird way. I, I did sort of a star Wars thing <laughs> and it wasn't strategic. <laughs> I released camera ready, which was the first book that was book two, technically that I re released four position only, which was the sequel to that. And then I went back and released princess smile, which was the prequel to the, the two. So it was like book two, three, one. And, um, so I was finishing up four position only and I had this, this idea about what I could do without saying fully goodbye to the characters. Cause I, I have fun with them. They become like so much a part of my life and I'm like, okay. And, and my readers like that too, you know, they get attached. I think that's why people love series because they get attached to characters and they want to see what's going to happen next. And so when I started to outline Summer's Blood, I knew I was taking it out of the romance category and into a thriller mystery. And that required a lot of research. It required a lot of reading in that genre. It just required out heavy outlining, which I really didn't do a lot of in my first three books. Um, and there was, there were a, a lot of drafts and a, a lot, it took me a lot longer to write Summer's Blood. And so that's kind of the history that I use the same characters from the series, but what I usually do is drop people off that are a little bit less, you know, they aren't going to be a part of the story moving forward. And I keep a couple of the main characters. I add a lot of new characters, which I did in Summer's Blood. And um, so that's that's what I can tell you. It was a leap genre wise to go from one to the other, um, change the dynamic of the story, change the focus of the story. Uh, Summer's Blood is very plot driven, um, but there are some very rich characters. The, the original series was very character driven. Um, but they are tied together and they live in the same universe. And I feel as though I've created a really nice uh, I leap into that new genre without forgetting the backstory of what happened. So you could read any of these books. You don't have to read them in order. You could pick sure. up one and you'll never feel like you've missed something if you didn't read one of the others. That's how I wrote them. So what's the best fan letter you've ever gotten? The best fan letter I have ever gotten was from someone who I used to work with in the industry who was like nine skip levels above me and was a real juggernaut in the casino industry. And that person, he wrote me a, a note. He read Summer's Blood in one afternoon. <laughs> Yes. And he said, I couldn't stop reading. He said, you nailed the casino industry. You nailed Las Vegas. I, I it was reminding me of things that I had experienced there. And so that was so incredibly flattering to me that, that, that he read the book, number one, that he loved it. And then he said he wanted, he can't wait for the next one. And so <laughs> that was a surprise. Yeah. So with all of this life that you've lived with the career and the writing and everything in between, if you had a dream tonight, ran into the 18 year old version of you and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on this life you've led, the wisdom that you've accumulated, what advice would you impart on that young version of you? Wow. Um, that's a really great question for me to think about. You know, my first inclination was to be yourself. I would tell my younger self to be myself and to not be so hard on you. Be be easier on you. Um, and because things will work out and and you know, don't worry so much. I was a I was a worrier at that age. I was so worried about my future. I was so serious. <laughs> and I, I always wished that like I could tell myself to just relax, be yourself, and have a little more fun. So of everything that you've done and evolved into and accomplished, what are you the proudest of? I'm the proudest of, I, I, I am the proudest of my books. I'm pr I, I, I feel as though those were accomplishments, but they, they weren't, they weren't, it, it what didn't feel like work to me. I'm very proud of those stories. I'm proud that people read them, that people 
get, are entertained and have fun. That's a huge thing with me is like, if you're having fun and I'm creating something and, and giving you a little bit of an escape, um, that's really, I, I love that. I love when somebody comes to me and says, wow, I, I just, that was such a, a, an escape. That was a world in and of itself that, and I love that. That's the, I'm very proud of creating that world that didn't exist before. So if you could get into a time machine, we get off this call, a time machine pulls up and you could see one event in human history with your own eyes. What would you love to have witnessed? I would love to have witnessed a little more of the, of what went on in the sixties. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just would have loved to have been aware of, of everything. You know, I was a, a baby when, when a lot of the stuff that happened in the sixties, the late sixties, but I wish I could have been a part of that. So everyone has a perception of you, all of your fans, your, your family, friends, everyone around you, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Gosh, these are great questions. <laughs> Giving making me self reflect here. <laughs> this is the therapy question. I know I need some more coffee. <laughs> Could you repeat that? <laughs> so we we all have these bubbles of people around us that think certain things. Like all of your readers <clears throat> think of you in a certain way. Your family does. Your friends do. Everyone that you work with at your day job. But you ultimately run the show. What is your personal perception of who you think you are? I think that I am, um, my perception is that I'm a kind person, that I love to nurture and mentor others. I, I work in a lot of programs with students who, and I love to see other people grow. I've always been a mentor at work. So, I mean, that's how I see myself. I, I feel as though I'm a kind person. And um, I think that's the most important thing for me, for anyone to know about me is that that's, that's so important to me is to be very kind to others and to help, and to help when, when you can. So if anyone wants to pick up the books, they want to reach out to you, they want to learn more about you, any of the good business in your world, where can they go? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can reach me. Um, you can you can see all my books. They're by the way, they're available in audiobook and e every every format. You can find them everywhere. Adelroyce.com is my website. There's a lot of fun stuff on there. You can uh, you can email me too. My email is on the on that website and and reach out to me. I love to hear from readers and writers. Um, and uh, and, and one of the things about the site is it's very interactive. So you can, you can find all my characters. I have these little silhouettes that flip over when you hover on them and give you a short bio. You can really get into the world before if you don't feel like committing to the book. The other thing I just want to mention real quick is I have a short story collection coming soon. And I have uh, one of the stories is on the, the website. If you just scroll down and you have to sign up for my Readers Club, which is just... Um, you may get an email from me in a rare time, but you'll get access to that story. So you can get a little snippet of my writing without having, and people like short stories, you know, they like to, to get in and get out and not necessarily have a whole book to commit to. So that's how I would say. Wonderful. I love it. Adele, thank you so much. Thank you for your story. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate you as well. You bet. Send my love to San Diego. I miss it. I sure will. <laughs> right. Thank you.